Good morning. Welcome to St. Ambrose on this very special day of First Communion. Please rise and join in our opening song, number 575, Let Heaven Rejoice. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. So welcome to our celebration this Sunday. A very beautiful day. A very wonderful day for all of us. It is Good Shepherd Sunday. It is also Mother's Day. And we have eight of our, uh, of our children making their first Holy Communion. So we have a lot to celebrate today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch at Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now go to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted, and they heard this and glorified the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers, and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went on to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. Serve the Lord with glory. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst any more, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb, who is in the center of the throne, will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good and all the time. So as I said, today being the fourth Sunday of, the, uh, of Easter is also called the Good Shepherd Sunday. And also, or you can put a slash, Vocation Sunday. Then it is also huge because this weekend is also Mother's Day. And then uh, to crown it all, you have seen our beautiful angels today making their first communion, so it's wonderful. We are happy to see all of you here. So Good Shepherd Sunday. And from our readings today, we see how Jesus is using the analogy of the shepherd and the sheep. So I would like to tell you about the pastoralist community uh, in Africa. So among the nomadic pastoralist communities uh, in Africa, where their livelihood is based on animals, so you'll find them, they have cows, goats, sheep, camels, donkeys. That is their entire livelihood. And because it is their entire li livelihood, they move with them all over the place. So looking for greener pastures and also clean water to drink. So which means the entire community will, will bring all their flock together for the sake of security. 
so they'll graze during the day. At night, they are all together. So you can imagine having like 10 households, each having like 100. So those are like 500 animals staying together. And the shepherds, who normally they are the young boys, they actually don't go to sleep in the house. They sleep next to the animals. And in most cases, amidst them. Then when it's time in the morning to let the animals go to grace, each of them will call his animals. And the animals know the, the voice of its uh, shepherd. And they will stand and they will begin following him. So the animals know their shepherd. And the shepherd knows his animals. I mean, it's the 500 can identify this one is mine, this one is mine, like that. And they know the voice. So that is the image Christ is using today as a good shepherd who knows all of us, his flock. And he expects us to know, to know his voice too and to follow him. He is the good shepherd. So we have good shepherd, means, which means we also have bad ones. Right? Otherwise we would have just said this shepherd Sunday. But it is good shepherd, which means there could be bad ones. So Christ is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sake of, the, uh, of his flock. We can see from our readings today, the first reading, we see the disciples going out to preach and they are reaching out to the Gentiles because the Good Shepherd also cares for those Gentiles, wants them to be among the flock. And the Good Shepherd guides them. Despite the challenges they get, the Good Shepherd is guiding them. Then from our second reading from the book of Revelation, we see John saying, I saw a vision of a multitude of people, impossible to count. People from all nations, from all races, from all tribes. So it's a vision that the Good Shepherd wants all his flock to be together. So he cares for all or the entire flock. And in the gospel reading, which was very brief, it talks of three things. I know my sheep. My sheep, they know me. And they hear my voice and they follow me. So that is the good shepherd who is inviting us and who, is, who cares for all of us and also who lays down his life for our sake. We are here today to come and hear the voice or at the invitation of that voice of the Good Shepherd whom we are going to receive shortly after now. So we come together today to come and heed and hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and to follow him. And through that, all of us, we are the flock, but also we have been incorporated or we share in the shepherdhood of Christ in one way or the other. Because a shepherd is one who has uh, the flock under his or her care. So you might be working for the government. You are also a shepherd. The, those people, the president, are all, uh, all the ranks there. They are shepherds. In our families, all the parents, 
you are also a shepherd. You have people under your care. So you are also a shepherd after the good shepherd uh, uh, Christ. Also in the church, we have the, the, the Pope, the bishops, the, the priests coming down like that. Even our religious uh, uh, directors, they are also shepherds. And then, today being Mother's Day, are mothers shepherds or not? The mothers, the mothers who are here, are you a shepherd or not? <laughs> I was telling them yesterday, today is called Mother's Day, and it's not, it's not called Women's Day. Mothers, Mother's Day, Women's Day. Are they the same? No. They're not the same. But all mothers are women, right? But not all women are mothers. Because a mother is a shepherd. Just look at, uh, look at uh, our mothers. When you are very little there, when you are born, the baby there is, is, is trying to, to, to grasp the, the, the finger of the mother because the hand is too tiny. Okay. The first day in school, who takes you to school? The, who, who takes the, the child to school the first day? Is it the father or the mother? Or both? <laughs> so when they arrive at the school there, the first day, uh, the child is crying when, when he sees the mother leaving. And now this looks a new place. Then when the bus comes in the evening, who goes to pick up the child? Who? <laughs> yeah, so mothers, they, they do a lot. So that is why we honor them also today. While still on the same note as uh, the family being, uh, the parents being shepherds, today also we have our, our children making their first Holy Communion. And you know, the first catechist is who? They are the parents. So even the foundation which the kids uh, get, number one, has to come from home. So how the parents are living and showing the kids, that is exactly how the kids are going to, to grasp. If there is a lot of swearing in the house, will the kids learn that? They will. If in the, in the family, we pray before dinner and we pray before going to bed. Will the kids learn that? Sure they will. So as parents, we are also shepherds. And we ought to be good shepherds. And I'm very proud of these families today for helping these young ones to make this step. And they are going to receive Christ today. I was telling them yesterday, you know, you are going to, to receive Christ tomorrow. And once you receive Christ, Christ is in you. Now, you ought to be Jesus to others. Because you have Jesus in you. So I would like to encourage the families. Let's continue journeying with these young ones and helping them. May they grow in that faith. So please journey with them. Let this not, I, I, I hope to see them every Sunday not only when they'll be making their confirmation. <laughs> so be good shepherds. And then finally today, you remember it's also, uh, it is it's commitment weekend for our bishop's annual appeal. And as I've said, all of us are shepherds in one way, or another. Now, as a good shepherd, so we agreed with Father Mike that we, are, we ought to lead by example. So Father Mike last night made his, actually he paid off his, his pledge. 
and I'm also doing the same now. And I, I know I'm not the first one. We, we have received uh, quite, quite a number from all of us, from most of us. So let, let us emulate the Good Shepherd today and also make your pledge because our desire is to, to close this appeal by the end of the month. Or, uh, what do you think? At the end of the month should be good, right? Then we are done with this thing and we continue celebrating. <coughs> so if all of us make your pledge today, then next week I'll, I'll bring the, the thermometer and it will be full. And we just, we just celebrate. So as a good shepherd, leading by example, yeah, let us, also, let us do, do something like that. I remember one, one parent telling me one time that I was with my son and they were announcing this bishop's annual appeal week after week. And the son said, Mom, why don't these people just write, uh, write off this thing once and for all? So, what we do also, we are, we are teaching the young ones uh, that virtue. So I want to encourage you today, being good shepherd, and all of us are shepherds in one way or another, let us also support that uh, the bishop's annual appeal. And we pray that we may be good shepherds hearing the voice of the supreme shepherd knowing him and following him all the time in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit